McDonald, Don, how are you guys doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning, Bonnie. How are you? Camille, loving the turnout, loving the turnout. Good morning, guys. I hope everyone had an incredible weekend. Yes, a wonderful one. Time to rest, rejuvenate, make sure you're all feeling good, right? That's it. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Dwayne, you're back, sir. How you doing? Beautiful, beautiful. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, Camille, I love the fact you're always here, young man. Uh, representing present, making sure you're increasing that mind knowledge, right? Okay, let's see. It's literally just um, on the hour. So I'll give us maybe a minute to see if we've got some more guests joining us today. Uh, I've got another great one, guys. I've got another great one. I'm going to do a bit of a follow-on from goal setting because... Yeah, I'm going to give us another minute and then I'm going to roll straight into this one. Guys, you know how I feel about these months. Well, you know how I feel about these meetings in general, right? Yeah. I just love passing on because if you guys are getting value, then all that does is it makes me smile because it helps me understand that we are all moving in exactly the right direction. Give me one second, guys. Uh, okay. Where's this bar? Why doesn't this bar want to go away? Okay, no problem, no problem. We're all good. Okay, so we literally are one minute past the hour. I will give it another 30 seconds or so. So guys, when you come onto these calls, what goes through your mind about what you're going to receive? Dwayne, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> motivation for the day oh beautiful bunny beautiful beautiful and does it set you up in the right fashion definitely okay it's excited about it it's awesome yeah uh, wonderful Dwayne you were saying sir yes sir uh just that my mind is getting strengthened a little bit more the muscles and up there getting uh you know worked out yeah to, to get me better uh perfect perfect because the reason why I like to go over things and just add or drip feed the mind is because hmm, I heard a key the other day. I've, I've heard a phrase and I've heard it before, but when Chris actually said it to me on Friday, I believe, and it just refreshed my mind that repetition is the mother of skill. So the more we go into it, the more we go over there. Uh, good morning, Phil. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? The more we go over information is the more we absorb, the more we learn, the more we embrace the change. But as you said, Dwayne, it is that muscle. It is that muscle that we need to consistently keep working out to ensure that we are always moving forward. Yeah? Okay, guys, as I said, you know me. I don't run for people that are late. I run for the people that are on time because I respect your time. And if people are slightly late, they're going to get the recording anyway. So it's all good. It's all good. Guys, as I said, I'm doing a little bit of a follow-on today. I'm doing a little bit of a follow-on with regards to goal setting. Because goal setting, as we all know, is hugely, hugely important, especially when you take it from the mind and put it out onto paper. As Tammy said the other day, the connection between the mind and the pencil is, is, is yeah, the mental, from mental to pencil. She said that, and I love that phrase. Absolutely beautiful. So what I want to do, as I said, I want to call this, for, uh, this session today, Keys to an Achievable Outcome. Keys to an Achievable Outcome. This is basically, as I said, the follow on to your goal setting. Because when you set yourself strong goals, it has to be, it has to be congruent with your values. If your goals are not congruent to your values and your own mental personal systems, you have a conflict. If you have internal conflict, what then unfortunately happens is the unconscious mind gets confused. When it gets confused, nothing happens. Simple. The unconscious mind gets free, nothing happens. So we need to make sure that your goals are in alignment with your values. Um, hey, Denise, how are you? Denise, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, no, that's you, McDonald. McDonald, I think we've got a little bit of background noise. I'm just going to put you on mute, sir, okay? Just so that we've got a good quality recording. Can you hear me? I think McDonald's possibly suffering with a little bit of sound quality today. But once again, everyone will get the recording, so it's not a big issue. As I said, keys to an achievable outcome. You need to understand that all of these questions that I'm about to give you need to be answered when you're writing your goal. 
if you can't answer all of these questions in a positive manner, there will be conflict in your goal. If there's conflict in your goal, that means there's a conflict between your conscious and your unconscious mind. And although your unconscious mind is more powerful, if there's a conflict, it won't take action to drive you towards your goal. So the first thing, as you know, all of your goals need to be stated in the positive. What specifically do you want? What's the outcome you're searching for with your goal? That needs to be very, very clear, and it needs to be consistent with what you're actually looking for. You then need to specify your present situation. So where are you now? And as I said, guys, it is always a huge bonus when you're being brutally honest with yourself. You can, you can tell your friends and your colleagues stories. You can do that all day long. But you can never lie to yourself. You can never, ever lie to yourself. So you need to understand where specifically are you now in relation to your goal. Then what I need you to do is specify the outcome. And what I mean by that is, Okay, I'm going to back up just a little bit. We all learn differently. There are some people that are visual learners. There are some people that are audible learners. There are some people that are kinesthetic. They like to feel. So as I said, you've got visual, you've got audible, you've got kinesthetic. There are, are other learning patterns, but those are kind of the main ones. So with regards to the outcome of your goal, what you're going to see, what you're going to hear, what you're going to feel, because you've got to remember, you need to make this goal so real that when you close your eyes, you can step into that vision. So as if it were right now, what are you going to see here and feel in relation to your goal? And you know what? Make it compelling. Make it absolutely compelling. So the vision you're seeing, it's so compelling that, as I said, I heard the phrase, it's in HD, 1080p. Yeah, that's how crystal clear the picture is. You step into it and you know you're almost, it's, it's like you're there right now. And ensure that you focus wholly and solely on the end result, the outcome you're looking to achieve. The, 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 the how you actually get there, as strange as it may seem, that's not really your responsibility. That's the responsibility of the universe. The universe will provide you what some people call accidents and coincidences. There are no such thing as accident or coincidence. What happens is when you are aligned with your own personal goals and your values, the universe starts to conspire with you to organize your goals. So make sure you focus wholly and solely on the end result. Okay, now this is something that maybe some people don't really think about it in enough detail. You need to specify evidence procedure. Okay, what do I mean by that? How will you know when you have it? So how exactly will you know when you've achieved the goal? It sounds clear, it sounds straightforward, it kind of sounds obvious, but we need to factor all of these things in when we're actually heading towards that end outcome, heading towards that goal that we know it's going to set us on fire. It's going to create that burning passion in the pit of your stomach. And this goes back to what I was saying. Is it congruently desirable? So what would this outcome get you? Or what will it actually allow you to do? The reason I ask all these questions is, it's great to have all of these grand goals about money, conspiring to do this, conspiring to do that, but what's it really gonna do for you? What's it gonna allow you to do? What's it gonna get for you? And another thing I'd ask is, is it self-initiated and self-maintained? I.e., is the goal, is it only for you? Because you can't control other people's actions you can't even control other people's intentions. Dwayne, let me ask you something, sir. What would you say you can control? Your own actions. Okay. Your own actions. Your own thoughts, your own um, 
your own outcomes based on what you put into it. Okay. Anything outside of that, thank you, Dwayne, as usual, thank you. Anything outside of that is not your responsibility. And you have to be crystal clear on that. Your goal has to only be for you. If your goal is involving, well, if this person does this, then that's going to help me. No, you can't have that. Simply because you can't control anyone else's actions. And is it appropriately contextualized? Once again, I always like to break down. Okay, so where, when, how, and with who do you want it? Because, for example, if you've got a family, you know that the goal usually isn't just for you. It's to enhance your family life. It's to give maybe your children a better life, give your partner a better life. So is it appropriately contextualized? Who is it going to impact? But this is a great one. This, this, this is one that I really, really like you guys to think about. What resources are needed for you to achieve your goal? So what do you actually have now? And what do you need to get the outcome? Have you ever had or done this before? Is this something that's completely fresh to you? This is a very, very important thought process, guys. And as I said, if you don't start to become this specific when you're writing your goals out, it's almost like wishful thinking. And as we know, <laughs> a wish is just a dream. Because, Phil, I know you've always got a, a good comment for me, sir. Phil, what would you say is the difference between a dream and a goal? You're on mute, sir. Phil, you're on mute. Perfect. Bottom left-hand corner, it should be. Let me see if I can assist you there. Ah, uh, yeah, there. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I'm a little uh, um pouco agitado esta manhã. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the difference between a dream and a goal in your, in your opinion? Well, it, it just, I know what it's like mm -hmm. to have a, a, a dream, yep. a goal, yep. to achieve something. I mean, where I've invested everything, mm -hmm. 12 years of my life. Yep. And there was a certain point where well, I, I had this close friend of mine. Uh, an expat down here in, in Peru, he passed away about a year ago, and well, sorry to hear but that. he kept on telling me, he says, Phil, that dog ain't gonna hunt. <laughs> I mean, he, the, just from his perspective, mm -hmm. is that sometimes we, we pursue things, we put our whole heart, soul, and intent into it, yep. and it, it just, you know, lots of times, I, I mean, things like this, it, it's like you, it, it, I go back to that that verse, in, that verse in, in Galatians, in the Bible, where it says where you have the flesh and the spirit that mm -hmm. they're in conflict with one another. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Nick Jagger was correct when he said, you, you can't always get what you want. Yeah, so, I appreciate uh, that. And, and so, the, I mean, to me, there just has to be, um, you know, this whole thing with with goal setting, I mean, it, it's it's like to to uh, uh, you know apply all of these principles that you hear about the law of attraction mm -hmm. for 12 years, and then finally you just you have to become brutally honest with yourself and say, yeah, this this was not meant to be. Then it comes back to okay, all right, well, what you know, what is you know, what is your will, not my will. That's correct. You know, but I'm actually going to challenge that for you, sir. I'm going to challenge yeah. The reason why I'm going to challenge uh, that Okay, to because, that. you know, I've, uh, and, and I'm not, I, I don't want to be preaching yeah. religion to people because, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I have not set foot in a church in 10 years. 
Okay. <laughs> the reason why I'm going to challenge what you're saying and I'm going to help you look at it oh, from okay. a different perspective is the law of attraction is living in this world. But the law of attraction isn't based on thoughts, it's based on feelings. So if your thoughts are clear and focused on your intent, but you don't truly believe it, if your feelings are completely in alignment, that's where the conflict comes. And when you have that internal conflict, you become stagnated because the two are not congruent. The two are not aligned. Alignment is the most important thing in order to achieve your goals. You have to be spiritually aligned. You have to be feeling it completely from the pit of your soul. I'm going to ask Bonnie a question. Bonnie, can I bring you in, please? Sure. Bonnie, when you set yourself goals and you have a vision of something you want to do, how is it that you always manage to achieve it? One step at a time. <laughs> and and well, then I have, go ahead, I have small victories that get me that feeling you're talking about, these victories. Uh, That's what I was thinking. Your goals are something you're actively pursuing and your dreams are a fantasy. You know what? Bonnie, I'm going to pay you later, okay? <laughs> you, you, you and Dwayne are definitely on the payroll. You and Dwayne are 100% right. on the payroll. I'm okay? hoping you do that. <laughs> <laughs> because that is it. And this is what keeps you on that path. And this is what I spoke about a couple of days ago. You have to celebrate your small victories. By celebrating your small victories, it keeps you feeling excited about what you're driving forward. Because if you're not seeing any, any growth, if you're not seeing things that you believe are worth celebrating, what then happens is this just becomes a chore. But in reality, another thing I want to add, thank you again, Bonnie. Another thing I want to add to what Bonnie said, the difference between a dream and a goal, that space in between is called action. A dream, anyone can dream, but when you've got a goal, as Bonnie said, you take things one step at a time, you celebrate your small victories because that keeps you aligned, that keeps you focused, that keeps you feeling that, you know what, I'm going to make this happen. So going back to what I said in terms of what resources are needed, have you ever had or done this before? And more importantly, do you know anyone who's had or done this? This is why mentors are so important because a mentor, not only will they help you with the one step by one step approach, a mentor will also tell you how it felt along the way. And when they can inspire those feelings in you, wow, that's when the growth becomes accelerated. Because you're not speaking to someone who's pie in the sky. You're speaking to someone who's been where you want to go. So they can tell you the reality of it. They can explain the difficulties, of course, because every goal is going to challenge you. If it doesn't challenge you, it's not big enough. In actual fact, I actually like to, like to say, if your goal doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. If when you look at your goal, you don't think, oh my days, how am I going to achieve that? It's too small. And the reason why I say that is because, as I said, the how is not your responsibility. You just have to get into that feeling of what it's going to be like when I get there and be prepared to take action every single day. Those small victories, I cannot speak enough about them. Simply because they give you the confidence to know you're heading in the right direction. Does this make sense, guys? And when you start to receive that internal confidence that you're heading in the right direction, that will excite you. So if you're going along your journey and these boxes aren't being tipped, that potentially is why you could be having some difficulties. So it's a case of, as I said, reassessing and evaluating your goal on a regular basis. You have to be flexible in your outcome. As I spoke about, do you remember guys? There are a thousand different trails to go to the top of the mountain. There's not just one path. And if the path you're on to get to a destination is blocked, find another route. Successful people 
just ask intelligent questions. When you ask very intelligent questions, you get the answers to the conundrum that you're facing. That answer, that small piece of the puzzle might unlock everything for you. This make sense, guys? Okay. And another important factor with regards to your goal, as I said, when you're visualizing it, that's incredible. But can you act as though you already have it? You know when they talk about fake it until you make it? Some people disagree with that, but I wholeheartedly agree with that, simply because when you fake it until you make it, you create those feelings. And it's all about the feelings of can you act as though you have it? And I'm not talking about going out and spending money you haven't got, but I'm talking about how is it going to feel? How am I going to behave when I'm in this position? Once again, that goes back to another to uh, point I touched on. Do you remember when I spoke about reverse engineering? Who do I have to grow into to achieve that goal? Because the person you are now is not and will not the person will not be the person you become when you achieve your outcome. Because with your growth, you acquire new attributes, new skills. So you change as an individual, you evolve. So when you're acting as though you've already achieved it, think about the qualities you're going to have to take on board. Think about how you're going to make it happen. Think about how you're going to have to behave. One of the things I want you to understand, guys, when you think about the how and the what, you're thinking about the very logical part of your mind. When you think about the why, you are now thinking about the part of your brain that activates your behavior. So when you speak to the why part of your brain, when you can help yourself, as crazy as it sounds, but when you can help yourself understand why you're doing something, you're speaking to that part of your unconscious mind that can control your behavior. When your behavior is being controlled, it's it gives you clarity. And clarity is almost like the fog, the mist has just been cleared and now I can see where I'm going. And as usual, it's always a case of one step at a time. The next part is, is it ecological? For what purpose do you want this? Why do you want to achieve your goal so badly? If it's just to be the big person, I've made a lot of money and now I'm great. Is that really in alignment with who you are? Is that really in alignment with your values? So is it, is it ecological? Why do I want it? What will you gain or lose when you have it? Because sometimes you achieve a goal and you lose some baggage. You lose some negative thought processes. So what will you gain, but also what will you lose when you achieve the goal? Ask yourselves, what's going to happen if you get it? What is going to happen if you get it? What won't happen if you get it? So if you achieve your financial goal, How's that going to change your life? What's going to happen? If you achieve the financial goal, all of a sudden you can clear those unsightly debts. So what won't happen, you might not get any further legal action with regards to your debts. Does this make sense, guys? You've got to break it down like this because if it's not congruent, if your values are not in alignment with your goal, you've got conflict. And in conflict, nothing gets resolved. Think about what will happen if you don't get it. But also, what won't happen if you don't get it? These questions are keys to an achievable outcome. If you're not asking yourself these questions when you're writing your goal, 
I would have to ask you, how committed to yourself are you? How serious are you about achieving this? Is this goal just on a wish list? Because, you know, when we're young, we wish on stars, right? Are we still just wishing? Are we still just hoping? Remember what I said, hoping is not a strategy. There are certain words I've asked you to eradicate from vocabulary. Bonnie, we spoke about this. Bonnie, can you recall what words we put in place? I will, or it will, just make it present and uh, true. Absolutely. So, Sorry, I forget exactly what I wrote down there. That's okay, because when, do you remember when, when we were speaking about trying, and I said to you, no, Bonnie, you're not trying, you're doing. I'm doing. Absolutely, right. because you are knocking over your goals one by one. So yep. you're, no longer, you're no longer trying, you're doing. And you're not hoping, you're not wishing, you're doing. And I'm also, doing. Yeah, and also, guys, thank you again, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. Also, guys, it's about understanding that you have to remain present. Don't say, I will do that. I'm going to do that. Dwayne, why would I say not to say I will or I'm going to? Why would I suggest that? Don't say that. Because you're not picturing yourself actually doing it when you're putting it in a present, in a future tense. <laughs> Put in a present. <laughs> You're actually putting yourself in the position to actually achieve. You know what? I know categorically that what I'm saying is sinking. And the reason why I know so clearly that what I'm saying is sinking, because when I'm asking for feedback, people are clearly on the right page. Dwayne, once again, thank you so much. That is the exact answer I'm looking for. When you are talking about what you are doing, do not future face it because if you future face it, guess what? It shall forever remain in the future. Whenever you talk about things that are in the future, that is where they shall forever remain. You have to understand quite clearly, everything has to be present. Do you remember that little phrase I gave you? And I, as I said, I couldn't remember where I got it from, but I know I picked it up from somewhere. The past is history. The future is a mystery, which is why we have to live in the gift of now. The gift of now is the present. It's not coincidence why it's called the present. It's a gift. Stay present, stay grounded in your now. Everything you want, think, act, feel, see it in your now. If you listen to your own language when you talk about things you will either talk visually you will either talk audibly or you will either talk in a feeling in a kinesthetic manner yeah you will mention do you know what i can really see myself doing that i can really see myself in that situation or you know i know it's going to feel incredible when i'm there or you know what I can hear the sound of that car. I can hear the sound of the engine purring. When you talk to yourself, when you become aware of your language, that will help you understand the sort of learner you are. When you understand the sort of learner you are, that helps you then understand how to create your goals. Guys, the reason why I'm spending so much time on goal setting is because this is paramount that you get this part correct. If you don't create and understand and get the structure for creating your goals correct, it's like building a house of cards. A breeze is going to come by and blow it over, let alone a challenge. As an entrepreneur, you are going to have challenging days, and I tell you this consistently. One of the things I will tell you though, is that the rewards, not necessarily just financial, the rewards based on satisfaction are greater than any reward me personally would say you can receive as an employee. When you love what you do, 
It's such a cliche, but it doesn't feel like work. Guys, I will, on a regular basis, work 13, 14, 15 hour days. And it's not always great for you, but sometimes you get in that zone and it's as though something's just driving you. You don't even always know where you get the energy from. But the energy comes from your alignment, you being congruent with your goals, with you having the feeling of what you want for the outcome and being passionate about it. And before I end, remember guys, the more people you serve is the greater your reward. If your goal is only and solely based on you, I can assure you it's going to be a tough goal to attain. But when your goal is bigger than you are, when your goal involves you serving and you providing solutions, the bigger the solution, thank you, McDonald, the bigger the solution, the more people you are serving is the greater the reward. And as I like to always end, remember guys, all can and will be achieved one step at a time. Guys, is today been useful? Has it been valuable? Very much, thanks. You're more than welcome, buddy. Give me a thumbs up, guys, if you're feeling what I'm saying to you. Yeah. Guys, you know the drill. We'll be on the same bad channel tomorrow. It's free. The only thing you guys need to contribute is your time. A finite resource, but I always say, spend it wisely. Time is the one commodity that we get a specific amount every single week. We have to spend all of it. We're not allowed to put some of it in the bank. Time doesn't work like that. You have to spend all of it. So make your time be a smart investment. Just like you spend your money and you want your money to grow, you want your money to multiply, Make the time you put into things, make the time be your investment that allows you to grow, grow and multiply. All can and will be achieved one step at a time, guys. I thank you. I appreciate you. Have a great day. See you on the same channel tomorrow, guys. Thank you, guys. Take care. Speak Take soon. Bye-bye.